So why are poles negative in the Laplace transform? And the first thing to say is that they're not always negative, but in many cases, it's important to have negative poles. So let's explore this. We're going to look at three of the properties of Laplace just to start with. And the first one is that if your function in the time domain is zero up until a certain time and then exists to the right of that time for positive values beyond that time, so it's a right-handed function, then we know that it implies that the region of convergence of the Laplace transform is a right-handed half plane. So that's a property that we know about. Uh, another thing we know about the region of convergence is that the region of convergence is between poles or between poles or but from poles to infinity or pole to plus or minus infinity. So this is another property that we have about poles uh, in the region and the region of convergence. And the third one I want to point out is that the Laplace variable equals, it's a complex number that equals sigma plus j omega. And so if sigma equals zero, that implies that s equals j omega, and that implies that we have the Fourier transform. So the Laplace transform, when you set sigma equal to zero, it equals the Fourier transform. It's the same as the Fourier transform. And another thing we know about that is that Fourier transforms can be performed when a function has finite energy. So uh, then where is it that we're wanting to have negative poles? How does all these come together for negative poles? Well, let's consider linear time invariant systems. And so these are systems where we're interested in the impulse response or in the Laplace domain, we're interested in the system function. So that is the output uh, divided by the input in the Laplace domain. So this is a system. Now for linear time invariant systems, they are real systems uh, that exist. And so these real systems must be causal. Uh, so for linear time invariant systems, they have this function, this uh, property of their impulse responses. For real systems in the real world, they are causal. They cannot respond before the impulse comes into the system. So they are of this form. So the region of convergence for a linear time invariant system which is a real one which can be realized in electronic componentry or mechanical uh, systems like shock absorbers or, or electric circuits, as we say, uh, the region of convergence is a right-hand half plane. So that's something we know about. Also, let's look at this one. Well, they go from a pole to infinity. So the right-hand half plane has to go from a pole to infinity. So we're going to be interested in the location of the poles. And then the third thing to say is, well, here we have uh, this property where the Fourier transform exists along the J omega axis in the Laplace transform. So for a linear time invariant system, if we want our system to be stable, and for stable systems, uh, which is m m most of the systems we're interested in, uh, then we need to have the region of convergence including the J omega axis so that the Fourier transform can be performed, and then we'll know that it is a stable system. Uh, and so what does this mean for our region of convergence? We'll put all these things together, and we've got the region of convergence, which is our S-plane, which is sigma and J omega. Uh, we know that it has to be a right-hand half-plane. We know that it has to go from a pole to infinity, and we know that it has to include the J omega axis so that it is stable. So it's for a causal, stable, impulse response, the pole which is the closest to positive infinity needs to be negative so that the region of convergence, which is a right-hand half plane, includes the J omega axis. In this case, it will be a stable causal system for our linear time invariant system. And so all the other poles must be more negative than that pole there, and that pole must be negative so that the region of convergence includes the J omega axis. So that's why we're often interested in, most often interested in designing our systems to have negative poles. So if this video has helped you, uh, give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Subscribe to the channel for lots more videos and check out the webpage in the description below where there's a full categorized list of all the videos that are on the channel.